Welcome to Seth Craft. I'm currently building a 20 by 30 workshop, as you can see behind me here. I now am at the point where it's time to install the exterior siding. I'm gonna be using a product called Hardy Board, and this is a concrete-based siding. It's very heavy, about 75 pounds per sheet. I'm gonna be getting these on the walls and using some two-inch screws to hold these into place. Now there are all kinds of different fasteners you can use, but I like to just uh, put the screws in and let it be. So let me show you real quick the product we're gonna be using, and then we will get to work installing this siding. I currently have nine sheets of this hardy board siding lined up for our work today. Now, like I said, this is a concrete based product and it is uh, pretty heavy and also breakable if not handled properly. So I'm gonna have to be careful getting this up on the wall. Now, this sheet right here, unpainted, will last a lifetime. And if you paint it, it will last multiple lifetimes. So definitely going to be a lot more durable than your typical uh, T11 siding that oftentimes is used on buildings like this. So I prefer to use this, at least for the lower part of the building. So this will cover the first eight feet, which will go from down here on this trim up to the eight foot mark. And then I'm gonna have a two foot piece, which will go all the way up to the eaves up here. And then after that, I'll be doing a different type of siding in another video up here on these top triangles because hoisting up this heavy of a material is no fun up that high. I do have OSB sheathing on my wall underneath this Tyvek, but I also wanna make sure I hit a stud when installing this heavy concrete siding. So I have marked down here on the bottom where my studs are, and that will help me line up and be able to uh, get screws into those studs. So I'm gonna be using these two inch screws here and then an impact driver and that will allow me to get these screws in here pretty quick and easy. So, all right, let's pull up the first sheet and see how well this is going to go. Okay, if you try to pick this stuff up with uh, too much force in one spot, it will break. I'm just gonna kinda slide this over here and then set it up on end. All right. Get it over here into position. Now, if you've got somebody to help you, this will go a whole lot faster and easier. I'm gonna see how well I can get one sheet up here. Nice full battery. All right. Probably should find something I can set this drill on or impact driver so it's close to me. Okay, I've got my impact driver over here on this ladder step. It's been a while since I've put this up here by myself, so let me see if I can't just get this into position and I will put a couple of screws in here just to hold it up. I'm able to use my trim down here with the Z bar to hold this up. Slide it over into position. There's a stud right here on the end of the building. And so if I take my tape measure, I can then measure out 16 inch here for 16 inch on center, make a mark there. And then I can essentially continue to move out every 16 inch and make another mark for where my studs are underneath. I like to wear gloves with this because the edges can be quite sharp. I've learned that the hard way. Luckily, the further I go down the building, the uh, lower it is to the ground, so I don't have to hoist this up as far. And that's a good thing. Something's not quite level here. I'm not sure if it's either my bottom trim or my side uh, trim over there. So I'm gonna go grab the level real quick and see if I can't figure out what's going on. Needs to uh, kick that way some, so.
I spent some time working with Alchu to get several more sheets of this hardy board siding up, and now it's time to work on the window. I'm gonna have to make some cuts to get around this window, and so I'm gonna be doing some measurements. I'm gonna take my measurements from here over to this trim, and then I also have to take the measurements from down here on the Z-bar up to the window, and then also have to come down from the four foot, or the eight foot mark to the top of the window. So let's go ahead and begin working on this little cutout here. Okay, just to see what I'm working with here, I move over four foot. I'm not far from the edge of the window over here, so that's good. Now, let's see what we need here. So from here to here is 25 and three quarter inch. Uh, yep, 25 and three quarter. And then up here, we need 36 and a quarter. 36 and a quarter. So, all right, we now know our two, uh, this bottom cut and this side cut. And then we will work with the window being a total of 39 and a quarter tall for that top cut. All right, I've got my hardy board siding laid out here. And I'm gonna do 25 and a half inches from this side over here. And that will give me a little extra gap in there to go around that window so that I'm not having to worry about uh, it being too close of a fit. Now up from the bottom, I'm gonna do 36 inches. And that once again gives me about a quarter of an inch of room to work around. And that way it's not gonna to be too tight, hopefully whenever I get it up there on the wall. So. Now I'm saying that my window is 39 and a quarter, and since I added a little extra room down here by a quarter of an inch, that actually makes it 39 and a half. I wanna add a little bit more up top as well, so we want 39 and three quarter inch from this marking right here. 39 and three quarter inch. Now there are lots of methods to cut this type of material. You could use a razor knife to score it and then pop it. You can use a, an angle grinder. You can use a circular saw with a carbide tip blade on it. My method is to use a jigsaw with a carbide tip blade. And that uh, is a little slow, but you can do some pretty fine detail on there. And it kicks up a lot less dust. So I've got a bandana to keep dust out and also some safety goggles whenever I am cutting this. So I'm just gonna zip through here on both sides and uh, go down that side as well to cut everything out. Now, you can see the material that I'm cutting out is about half of this, uh, 25 inch. And so I will have to be careful with that over there when I pick this up that it doesn't snap and break. So, uh, cause this stuff costs about $45 a sheet. Just how I installed the other sheets, I'm gonna be using these two inch screws with my impact driver. But I have to be very careful when I pick this up because half of the sheet is gone now in the middle. And so I'm gonna to try to hold it kind of up here, get it onto my Z trim down below and press it into position. And then I've got a stud here, I've got one here, and then I've got the studs around the window that I can use to attach this. All right, hopefully this doesn't break. I'm off a little bit too much at the top, but uh, I'll do something about that. If you're wondering about the difference in color, this is from a different manufacturer and hardware store than that one, but when it's painted, it'll all be the same. Okay, how do we do here? So my lower edge, I feel like was quite successful. I've got a decent little gap in there. Side, also good, but the top, somehow I messed up by about a half of an inch. So 
I'll have to do better on the next one. Luckily, it is still well within the Z-Bar trim up there. And also got a little close to that corner, but it all worked out just fine. Okay, so the next step here is to get this small strip done. So let's measure the distance between this previous piece and the end trim over here. And then we will have to cut out this little notch for the window and get that installed here. I may have some slight variation between uh, these gaps here. So let me check the bottom. We've got 18 and a quarter inch, 18 and a quarter. So that's very consistent all the way up. I've got a new sheet of this hardy board up here on my saw horses and our value was 18 and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this at 18. Go ahead and get that done. All right, I'm rip this full sheet down at 18 inches and then we'll cut out the notch for the window. Now, just like with the other piece over here, this should be uh, very consistent. So I'm gonna cut this one at the same 36 inch from there. And then this side needs to have about 13 and a quarter. And up here, it actually could go as much as 13 and a half. So I right, got 13 and a quarter over. Got this small piece cut here. Hopefully it's gonna fit well. Very good. All right, that is a nice fit. Now I don't have a whole lot of uh, stud behind here to get this attached to. I think I've just got uh, one going right up against this window. Um, so I may just put a couple of screws here on the side just to hold it into that OSB in the back. I am pleased enough with the results of putting this last bit of panel here on this side. My gap here was just a little bit big and of course Right above that window, there was a little extra space as well, but I'm gonna put a little caulking in there and paint, and it will be fine for this type of building that I'm doing. Now, as far as these gaps go right here, I may end up either caulking them and painting them, or I will put a uh, batten strip over there to uh, hide that. We'll have to see what I feel like, but this is uh, good enough for out here in the woods, since I'm gonna be pretty much the only one that sees this most of the time. All right, there is one more task that I want to show you, and that is cutting the strips that will go up here. So the rest of the building I will do without you and then show you what it looks like at the end. But uh, these are somewhere between 19 and 20 inches. So let's go ahead and cut one of those and get it up here. And then I will get to work getting the rest of this building done uh, so you can see the final product. I do have one sheet over here on this side but the cuts around the door will be very similar to the cuts around the window. Nothing too fancy. This task right here should be pretty straightforward since I'm gonna use the full four foot across here and just have to cut to match the height. So right here, I've got 19 and three quarters. Over here on this side, I've got uh, 20 and a quarter. So I'm a little off because of this piece right here, but um, I will be okay uh, getting it close enough up here that I can uh, set this into place and it will look good enough. So let's go ahead and get this cut. So I just got this piece cut out real quick. Let's see if I did a good job to get it to stick up here. I uh, made a discovery while I was up here. Whenever I put this piece right here in, I had not finished screwing in the trim on the side of the building, and that's why I was off by this much right here, uh, almost a half inch. So had I done that, this one piece would have been flush all the way across, but anyway, it's too late now. So looks like that's gonna fit just fine up there. We'll go ahead and get this screwed into place. And my exterior concrete siding is done. I'm a little bit embarrassed to tell you how long it took me to finish up this siding. Three weeks. Whenever I started, it was in the 70s out here and the leaves were green. Now it is 45 degrees to 50 and the leaves have been changing. So it took me way too long. I have to admit, whenever I started on this side over here, I was ambitious and doing a good job at make cuts, making them nice and tight 
But then by the time I got to the other end of the building, I was uh, seeing some pretty good gaps and I had lost interest in this uh, siding project, but it's done now. So let's go ahead and take a look around the building and see what it looks like. I will show you the parts that turned out nice and even the mistakes I made as I went along. Now, as you're watching, remember you should probably be using the uh, spiral shank nails to install this siding. I was using uh, torque screws and they sometimes will bevel out the siding a little bit and it doesn't look as good as it would with the nails. I also have not caulked or painted this or put any batten strips up. So that's something else that you can do to make your siding look even better. All right, let's take a tour around the building. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that there are two different colors of siding, and that is because I purchased all of the dark gray from one local hardware store, and I bought all of it, and there was gonna be a couple weeks before they got more, and so I went to a different hardware store and got the lighter stuff. On my previous building, I used the lighter and probably should have just stuck with that through the whole thing. But anyway, it is what it is. All right, so all of these sheets down here worked out really well. I had a little bit of an issue where I uh, transitioned from 10 foot walls. So about right here is a transition. And so a few of these screws were in nothing um, but uh, OSB. And so that happened again down here at the other 10 foot wall, about right there. And so as you can see, I had a little mistake where I was playing the guessing game and finally found it there and uh, that helped. Now, I'll be painting over those pencil lines, so that won't be an issue. Um, so anyway, I started off down here, and as you can see, there is a bit of a gap right in here. And that's because I had not screwed down the top of my trim yet. And so I was pushing and pushing and didn't realize that nothing from, I think about right here up, had been screwed down. So had I screwed that down properly, this would have been aligned right, and that would have helped with my other pieces up here as well. But you know what? It is what it is. So I had to cut 19 or 20 inch pieces to go up top to finish that out. And uh, I may have to put some caulking up at the very top up there to uh, close that little gap, but it turned out okay. As far as the window goes, you may notice if you're keeping up with this video series that I trimmed off this piece i had it sticking out and i thought you know what it's gonna be a nightmare to trim around that or to uh put the concrete board around that so just removed it bit of a gap there um definitely could have fixed that but okay it's good enough all right moving on over here uh, not too bad on this i went over the door and uh there's a bit of a gap up there and then uh, i had come back and fixed my top trim because it had some waving in it, but that turned out really nice. So I'm glad to see that. Going around the door also worked out well. Now, let's go over here to where the majority of the mistakes were made. You can see I didn't do so good with my window framing there. And also this gap right here gets worse and worse as it goes up, as you can see right there. Uh, same thing over the window here. So I am not very proud of this side, uh, at least around this window. There's more of an issue. Now the rest of these did work out well and I'm um, happy enough with those. Okay, last side over here. Now I started off with this piece as my original piece and then I got cheap and decided not to buy one last sheet of this for almost 50 bucks. And so I've got two pieces up top there. No, three pieces here here and here going long ways instead of up and down. It doesn't matter as far as functionality goes. It just may not look as good as it could. But in the future, right where that seam is, I'm gonna have a nice porch coming off of here. And so you'll never see any of that. So very cool. Well, that pretty much sums up my adventure in putting the concrete siding on here. Because the days are too cold now, I will have to wait until spring to do the painting and caulking and all of that. Um, but this right here has a very long life just being up on the building. So I'm not concerned about it. As far as working with the concrete board, I like it personally. It's a bit heavy and can break on you if you're not careful, but it will last forever and ever once it's up on the building. Now, as far as cutting this goes, there are several different methods that I have tried. 
I have used the razor blade method where you score it a few times and then pop it. That's okay. Uh, it's kind of tedious and you can't really go around corners. Um, so I prefer to use the jigsaw with a carbide tip blade on there. And it's a bit slow, but it doesn't kick up a lot of dust and you can easily go around corners or uh, as you'll see in a, an upcoming video, I even cut out the uh, door holes out of this using that jigsaw as well. You can use an angle grinder with a diamond tip blade or a carbide tip blade and that will, or a masonry bit, uh, but that will produce a tremendous amount of dust. So you wanna make sure you have all of your protection on when you're using that. And then lastly, a lot of people will use a circular saw with a blade designed to cut through this. Once again, a lot of dust and it is, um, it's not very good. <laughs> it's fast, but it also, you have to wear all the protective gear in order to use that. Whenever you move this, I highly recommend using two people. I'm working alone on this build um, and I'm not going but what, less than two feet in every, every pickup, so it's not too bad. Uh, as far as fasteners go, all of my buildings have used the um, fasteners, the Torx head screws to go into studs. But if you're gonna be uh, making this look really pretty, then you want to use those spiral shank nails because they don't eat out the, uh, the side as you drill it in. And also it goes pretty flat as well. So, all right, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. <laughs> be sure to hit that thumbs up button and make sure you are subscribed to the Seth Craft Workshop channel. As you can see, I have a lot more work to do here on this building as we are about to move inside to do insulation and walls and shelves and electrical and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.